In this video, I'll show you how to set up and use Portainer to manage Docker containers running on your Synology NAS. If you're new to Portainer, it's a lightweight service delivery platform that provides you a simple to use web interface for managing containerized applications. Once set up, Portainer can be used to manage all aspects of deploying and maintaining containers that you run on your Synology NAS, providing features like stacks and app templates, which aren't available in the Docker package provided by Synology. To learn more about Portainer, I'll leave a link to the Portainer documentation website in the description below. Portainer is deployed as a Docker container itself, so we'll need to install the Docker package from the Package Center to set it up on a Synology NAS. I'll do that by going to the Package Center, then search for and install the Docker package. Once the Docker package is installed, I'll bring up FileStation, navigate to the Docker folder, and create a subfolder that I'll name Portainer-CE, which will be used as a bind mount location when setting up Portainer. Next, we'll need to use the command line to set up Portainer, so I'll enable SSH by going to Control Panel, Terminal, and SNMP, and enable the SSH service. Now I'll SSH into my Synology NAS and execute this docker run command that sets up the ports and volumes needed to install and run Portainer. At this point, I should be able to launch the Portainer web interface by bringing up a new browser tab and connect via HTTPS to the IP address of my Synology NAS on port 9443. Now we'll be at the new Portainer installation screen where we'll need to provide a username and password to create a new user. Once the new user account has been set up, we'll be automatically logged into Portainer where I'll click on Get Started to manage the local Docker environment. Now we're ready to start using Portainer and the first thing I'd like to do is add a new container. As an example for this video, I'll create a PyHole container using the PyHole Nightly image. To do this, I'll first switch over to DSM, bring up FileStation, and create a few subfolders under the Docker folder for PyHole to use as bind mounts that will be linked to the PyHole container. Once that is done, I'll switch over to the Portainer web interface and click on the local environment, then click on Container. Now I'll click on Add Container and I'll name this one PyHole-Nightly. For image, I'll enter in the PyHole Nightly image information and have Portainer pull the image automatically before creating the container. I'll manually assign network ports adding UDP and TCP ports 53 as well as map TCP port 8080 to the containers port 80 being that my Synology NAS already uses port 80. Also, if you are planning to use PyHole for DHCP, you would need to create a network port mapping for UDP port 67 as well. I'll remove this in my setup. Next, I'll map the folders I created earlier as bind mounts under the Volumes tab. These are the locations that PyHole will store the files it generates, which will persist if the container needs to be recreated or updated. I'll add a few environmental variables under the env tab, specifically the web password, which will be the password that I'll use to log in to the PyHole admin panel, tz for the time zone that I'm currently in, and dns mask underscore user, which I'll set to root. Lastly, I'll switch to the restart policy tab and select unless stopped to have the container start up automatically unless I manually stopped it for some reason. Now I'll click on the deploy the container button and if all goes well, the PyHole container will be created successfully and Portainer will automatically redirect to the container list where if I refresh the page, we see that the PyHole-Nightly container is running in a healthy state. To make sure PyHole is running as expected, 
I'll bring up another browser tab and connect to its web interface by entering in the IP address of the Synology NAS and specify port 8080, which was the port assigned to the PyHole container earlier. I can also confirm that I can log in to the PyHole admin panel by clicking on this link here and log in with the password that was assigned to PyHole, which looks to be working fine. Note that I have a video specifically on PyHole which describes how I'd recommend setting things up, which I'll link to in the description below. The setup we just went through should work fine, but is mainly for a demonstration on how to set up a container through Portainer. Next, I'd like to go over how to update a container, so I'll close the PyHole admin panel and from the Portainer web interface, I'll switch to the image list. I know that a new PyHole nightly image is available, so I'll enter in the image information and click on the Pull the Image button. After the image is pulled, we see that the new PyHole image is now tagged as nightly, but is currently not being used. To update the PyHole-nightly container to use the new image, I'll switch over to the containers listing once again and click on the PyHole-nightly container to bring up its details. I'll then stop the container, then click Recreate to recreate the container with the same settings it was originally created with. This then brings up a confirmation window where I'll toggle on the Pull Latest Image option, although the latest image was already pulled earlier, and click Recreate. Once done, I'll select the PyHole-Nightly container and click Start to get it running once again. Now if I switch back over to the images list, we can now see that the older PyHole image is not being used anymore and the newly downloaded PyHole nightly image is. The last thing I'd like to do in this video and for good housekeeping is remove the unused PyHole image by selecting it and clicking on the remove button to make sure old unused images don't accumulate. There's so much more you can do with Portainer, but hopefully this video helped get you started, and if it did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also, leave a comment down below if you have any Portainer related questions, and check out some of my other Docker related videos listed here on screen. Lastly, consider subscribing to this channel and support my work by checking out the support this channel section in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.